Welcome to the port forwarding guide for your FOSCAM FI9821W camera or any other H.264 latest FOSCAM cameras um, like the FI9802W. Um, this, this tutorial is basically just going to show you how to port forward uh, the port that's assigned to the camera so you can see it remotely. So let's say I'm setting up the camera in my house. I want to go see it um, when, I, when I'm at work, um, when I go on vacation on my phone, um, whatever it is. This tutorial is basically going to show you how to see your camera remotely, how to access it from anywhere in the world, wherever you are. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, and get straight into that. So first thing we want to do is, um, in the last two videos, we've set up uh, wireless and we've also set up the, the basic network configuration. Um, so you should be set up with that already. I opened up IP camera tool. And we're going to go ahead and open up the camera. We're going to log in. And once we're logged in, let's click on the settings tab at the top. And let's go to network on the left side, and then let's click on port. So over here, we see that there are two ports. There's an HTTP port, and there's a media port. Uh, to explain this very generally, HTTP port is basically used when you are trying to access a device from outside. So in our case, we're trying to access the camera from outside networks from anywhere in the world. Um, our router needs to know uh, what port that incoming traffic is coming on. Um, and that's why we need to set a port for the camera. We need, we need to tell the router that, you know, the camera is on this specific port. So any connections that are trying to get into our router on this specific port, we can allow them. Um, because what happens is, your router is always going to deny any type of out, uh, external access to your router just because uh, of security issues. You know, obviously you wouldn't want a whole bunch of people getting into your router uh, without any protection. So basically what port forwarding is, is it's basically opening up a port so that outside connections can, can connect to your router to a specific device. So the, HTT the HTTP port is just the port that we're going to use for the camera, so we know which port we need to, to, to access when we're trying to get to our camera. So you can leave it at 8.8. Um, usually you don't want to keep it as a two-digit number. Um, that's mostly because a lot of different devices use um, ports anywhere in the two-digit range, like your, your router uses port 80 by default. Um, there's port 23, I think 25 is used. Um, so usually it's, it's also just kind of less stable sometimes if you're using a two-digit port. So what we like to recommend is that you change the port to something like in a four-digit range, uh, 8080, uh, 8090, 8091, anything like that, 2000. It doesn't really matter. Um, usually we like to use 8080 over here. Um, that's just what I've been, been doing for uh, a while. So. It's just natural for me to use this port. Um, the media port is something that's completely new, actually, to uh, FOSCAM cameras. So the media port is actually integrated with the web UI of the camera. And what that means is that when, when you're logging into the camera um, remotely, or you're logging into the camera and you get to the, to the login screen of the camera, you're not going to be able to access a live video um, of the camera unless you have a media port uh, set up um, and port forwarded in your router. Um, this is something, like I said, that's new with FOSCAM cameras. It's an extra port that you have to forward in your router, um, but it only takes a couple of seconds to do it. You're just adding another uh, port to forward um, within your router settings. So forwarding this media port actually allows you to see the video uh, live from outside networks and anything like that. So you have to have both ports uh, forwarded in, in, in order to see the camera from outside networks. So we can leave this at 888 if we want. Um, usually it's by default, it's, it's always on 888. Um, if, remember, if you're going to be using multiple cameras, you're going to need to set different ports for each multiple camera. So let's say if I had one camera on port 8080, and I had a media port on 888. Uh, my next camera, the second camera, would need to be something like 8081, and my media port could be something like 889. Uh, so remember, it just has to be different for for any device. It always the, the the port has to always be different, no matter what. So 
Let's go ahead and keep it at 888 for the media port and 8080 for the HTTP port. And we're going to save that. And when we save it, the camera actually has to upload the settings uh, to the camera. And I believe it might have to reboot. So it's saying to wait about 10 seconds. And it's going to reboot. And you'll see up here, it actually changed from port 88 to 8080, which is great. And you'll see the media port is still 888 over here, which is fine. So let's log in. And everything's fine. We see live video. We'll go back to settings. We go to network. We see port. And we see that it's changed now. So even if we go back to IP camera tool, we'll see that the port has changed now too, 8080, which is great. So from here, what do we need to do? So we need to go to our router. We have to log into our router. Remember in the first video, I was telling you that we would have to log into our router's IP address to change some, some settings. This is where we're going to need to do that. So in order to find out your, your router's IP address, I believe I also stated you would have to go to network configuration. And you'll need to see what gateway your, your router is on. The gateway is basically the IP address of your router. So we have it at 10.44.82.73. That's the IP address of my router. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a, another tab up here. And I'm going to type in 10.44.82.73 and push Enter. And when I push Enter, it asks me to log in to my router. Now this is always going to be different no matter what router you have. I believe the one I'm on is a Linksys Cisco router. Uh, you might have a D-Link router, you might have a Belkin router, um, any type of brand, you might have a different type of brand of router. So your default username and password is always going to be different. Mine is admin and the password is admin for Linksys. Um, what you can do is you can do a quick uh, Google search for your um, router's model and um, and just search for the default username and password, look for the user manual or any kind of quick setup guide for your router to see if there's a default password uh, and username for it and use that to log in. If that doesn't work, then you might have changed the password to something else when you were setting up your router in the first, uh, in the first place when you were setting up your entire network. Uh, you might have changed it there. So if you can, just try to remember that. Uh, see if you wrote it down somewhere. Um, but you'll need this information to log in and change the port forwarding. So I'm going to go ahead and log into this. And I am on a Cisco Linksys router. Linksys EA4500 is the model. So from here, what I'm going to do in my Linksys router, I'll have to go to Applications and Gaming and Single Port Forwarding, which I'm already on the page. And this is actually the port forwarding page that should look similar to uh, what you might have in, in your router. Sometimes it might be under uh, something like your firewall, um, a section called firewall, um, port settings, you know, uh, something, something along those lines. It might not be applications and gaming. That I think that's specific to Linksys routers, but it'll be different depending on, on what uh, router you're in. And I believe we are posting up uh, videos for all the common uh, router companies and how to log into them and do port forwarding. So check out that on our support page at www.foscam.us. So since I'm here now, what I need to do is port forward those two ports that I was talking about. So uh, the HTTP port of 8080, I need to port forward that. And I also need to port forward the media port of 888. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in a description or application name of what I'm port forwarding. So the first one I'm going to do FI9821W camera. And if you have multiple, you can put like camera one. And the port for this is going to be the HTTP port, which is 8080. So I'm going to put 8080, 8080. Protocol, usually you can use both. Uh, if you have to choose between TCP and UDP, Try doing TCP and it should work fine. I'm going to keep it at both for me. And here you're, you're going to need to put in the IPv4 address. And this is just the IP address of your camera. So remember how I was talking about uh, setting a static local IP address for the camera? This is where it counts the most because if this address changes, if it changes to 108, 
or 109 or something like that, port forwarding is not going to work anymore because you're setting a specific IP address to be port forwarded. If your IP address changes from 107 to like 108 or 109 and you have 107 in the router, it's not going to work anymore because the network is mismatched now. It's, you're, you're basically telling it that, or the camera is basically operating on a different IP address than what you put in uh, in here in your router. So that's why you, you might have a problem later on, and this is how you would fix it. That you would just need the IP address to be the same here as it is here. So we have 107 here. That's the IP address of the camera, right? 10448207. And we're going to check this box that says enabled. And now what we're going to do is we're going to port forward the media port. So we'll do media port camera 1. And we're going to put in the port 888, 888. We're going to keep it at both. Remember TCP if you have to choose between TCP or UDP. But if you have an option to choose both, choose both. And we're going to keep the same IP address because we're port forwarding two ports for it. I'm going to enable this checkbox and that looks like it's set correctly. So what we're going to do is before I push save, okay, before I push save, let me go ahead and show you um, how you would access this camera externally. So right now I'm accessing the camera on my internal IP address and an internal IP address, the local IP address, same thing, is IP address that the router assigns to your camera um, just by itself on its local network. It has nothing to do with the internet or anything like that. It's just on its own uh, network. This is the, the IP address that the router is just assigning. Uh, your ISP, whether you get internet from Comcast or AT&T or Verizon, whatever it is, they assign your, your network, your router, they assign you an external IP address. That's the IP address that is shown to uh, any computer across the world. So every every internet service that ever exists has a external IP address. It's not the same as this IP address that you see here. So in order to find out your, your IP address, whatever your IP address is, your external IP address, you can open up a new tab in your browser. And usually I like to go to www.whatismyip.com. Okay. Or you can also go to whatismyipaddress.com and it'll tell you right here your IP address is and it's this. So my external IP address is 99.109.24.143 and you'll see this is different than what I have right here because this one is external. This is the one showing to everyone in the world. My, my router is showing this, this external IP address to everyone in the world. And this IP address, 10448207, this is only showing to people who are connected to my router specifically. So no one else in the world can, can connect to my local IP address, this local one, unless they're connected to my direct router, in which case they would have to be in the area of my wireless network, or they just have to be connected with the Ethernet cord to my router. So we're going to be using this external IP address to connect to our camera. So what we would do Oops. What we would do is we would use this IP address. What we can do is we can copy this. I can open up a new tab. I can paste that IP address in. And I would have to put this port at the end. So I would have to put a colon 8080. And right now if I push enter, I don't believe it's going to work because I've disabled the port forwarding. I don't have port forwarding enabled yet. I haven't saved the settings. See at the bottom here it says save settings. I haven't saved it yet. So if I try to connect to this, you see that it's not working. It's trying to connect, but it's not getting anywhere because I haven't opened up my ports so that other people can access my camera from the outside or I can't access my camera from the outside, from outside networks. But I can always access the camera on this IP address because I'm connected to the router myself. See, I can, I'm connected wirelessly to it. Um, so it's not gonna work. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and save the settings for this. I have all the port forwarding set up correctly. I'm going to save it. And it's giving me 8080 external port is conflict. So actually, I believe this means that I have it saved elsewhere, actually. And here it is, actually. It's enabled over here, which is not good. So 
I'm going to disable this because I had it enabled on another camera. So I've saved that now. There's no port that's being forwarded on 8080. And I'll have to input the uh, port forwarding again. So that's why you need to make sure that the port isn't being shared by any other camera because that might happen. And uh, what I'll have to do is put in the media port again. 888, 888. Keep it on both or TCP, doesn't matter. And now I know that the port 8080 is not connected to any, any other camera, so this should be fine. So now if I save it, if it's enabled right here, the checkboxes, if I save it, it should save fine and it's saved. And now port forwarding is available for my cameras. So I can try this again and it should work. So let's see if I can en push enter again. And it connected to my camera, which is great. So now I can actually even connect by putting in the username and password, log in, and I can see video without any problems. And there shouldn't be any issues uh, from here. And there we go, we can see video. And you can do settings, you can do basic settings, all of that stuff on the left side, that's not a problem anymore. So, uh, that basically concludes the port forwarding tutorial. One last thing I want to show you is by, uh, how to check if your port is forwarded correctly. What you can do is you can open up a new tab and go to www.canyouseeme.org and you can put in the port number that you want to check. So I'm going to put in port 8080 and click check my port and it's telling me that there's a, a the port is successfully being seen um, on my network and, and outside networks. So that's why I can connect to the camera from that IP address, from the external IP address and the port. If I try to put like port 80 81 and I didn't I don't believe I port forwarded that it's going to tell me I couldn't do it now if you did port forwarding correctly and everything was fine and you followed exactly what I did your ISP sometimes ISPs might be blocking the port and you have to make sure that the port uh, is opened on their side so you might have to contact your ISP and let them know that uh, you can you need the port opened so that concludes the port forwarding tutorial for H.264 cameras and you can always contact us at support at if you need any other help with any issues.